and welcome to Point in Progress podcast, episode eight, your one-stop shop for news, recommendations, and some spicy takes. Join five friends across three time zones and two countries every week as we discuss all things that we love while still thinking critically about them. I'm your host, Fee, and we are going to be talking about everything that we really enjoy this week and everything that's gone down. Not too much gaming-wise, but at the same time, some crazy stuff happened as well. But we'll start off with the first segment, which is the checkpoint. Well, apparently, it was two people's birthdays this weekend, slash week, and they went to Buca de Beppo, and that yeah. was <laughs> Mario and Frank. I'm so happy this is part of the checkpoint. Went to Buca de Beppo. Buca de Beppo! Buca de Beppo! <laughs> it's like the next step up from uh, from Olive Garden, for those who don't know uh, what Buca de Beppo is. Yeah, uh, it's uh, filled with the, uh, Italian memorabilia everywhere, like on all sides of walls. There are dedicated tables, uh, one specifically for the Pope, which we got to see. It was like the Pope in like the Phantom Zone trapped inside of like this glass mm-hmm. coffin. It was very bizarre. I can't tell you which Pope it was, but it was and, a Pope. And his cold dead eyes. <laughs> And, uh, you don't we, even know which pope it is. No, yeah, I mean they all, they all, they're all, they all, they're all slightly balding. Like you notice, like I think that's a prerequisite for the pope is like you got to be slightly balding. Like you got to have like the hair and the sides, but you got to be bald at the top. Yeah, for sure. I guess to like for the hat, so the hat is touching head. I guess I don't know. I don't know, but we shared, we broke bread together. We celebrated our birthdays, his 25th, uh, my 31st, um, with my friend Casey. And we, I had a good time. You know, we got some cold scone creamery afterwards. It was a real nice time. And, uh, mm. you know, we were, you know, COVID safe, you know, put your mask on before you walk into the, the uh, restaurant. We did see an old mm-hmm. man try to sneak into the kitchen, which was awesome because Book and Beppo is known for taking you through the kitchen first and then taking you to your table, which, of course, now we've learned that they have stopped doing that in terms of COVID. We did learn one other dirty secret. If you remember this, Frank, we've learned mm. that Book and Beppo is also a front for Mr. Beast Burgers. And uh, and another restaurant here, like a Jamaican place. Yeah, some Jamaican is, jerk we, place. Oh, are you yeah, talking about Mr. Like, oh, Beast me? Burgers? Yes, Mr. Yes. Beast Burgers. So I, I I had this theory before, and I think this proved it. It, it Mr. Beast Burger is just a like surrogate restaurant fronted through other restaurants to supplement their income, and I think well, that that's what Buca de Beppo is doing. Since they can't get a lot of people coming in, and you wouldn't order like fam like a, a big ass plate because they they give you big 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 portions. So since not a lot of people are probably ordering that, they have to supplement their income by, um, by like making burgers on the side, I guess. Yeah, we saw and a lady walk out with the, the, the sticker and everything because we've ordered Mr. Beast burgers, so we've seen the packaging. So when she walked out of the store, we were like, "Oh, of course, Book of Beppo is a front for Mr. Beast burgers." Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds very scandalous, you know. It does. Actually, <laughs> I'm learning so much about Book of Beppo today that it's just. I almost looked at our waiter and be like, I want a Mr. Beast burger. And then just stare him in the eye. <laughs> like, I know what you, yeah, I know you know what I'm talking about, but we would have to get a family portions though. We'd have to get like family portions of Mr. Beast burgers. Oh, yeah, I'm okay with that. Just a mountain of burgers. Push a $5 bill across the counter. You know what I want. $5. You know, you know what $5. I really want. <laughs> I think you need a little bit bigger of a bribe there. I don't know. Have you have you seen uh have you seen waiter wages? They're probably like five dollars. Shit. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm closer to that vaccine, bro. <laughs> oh man. But it was okay. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> to was continue great. on, <laughs> we you may have noticed we have a new overlay to show our actual icon. Super great, super exciting. Um, so this is the new overlay. Hope you guys like it. Um, if you don't, Mario made it. Um, so you can talk to him about it. Yeah. Uh, shout Mario, out to Sly for weird. creating the concept and then Fee also adding on top of it. Thank you very much to um, but then, overlay 2.0. <laughs> I did nothing. <laughs> Harvey, you were here. It was helpful. You yeah. talked to yeah, us. You while. looked at it. Nobody can blame me because I did nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't do actually, anything on this it's either. It's all actually. about Harv because yeah. Harv could have said something. Um, so, to continue on, a favorite segment of all of ours, especially kind of a reflection of the week. What have we been playing this week? 
I'm gonna start off with Frank. I know for a fact that four of us are almost gonna have the same answer in some way, but we'll start off with Frank. What have you oh, been wow. playing this week? Wow. So it's uh, I got I got my COVID vaccine uh, earlier this week, and I've been kind of sleepy because of it. I'm actually kind of very sleepy right now because of it. But um, so I decided to play something very light, very unstressful, doesn't require a lot of attention, and that is Rainbow Six Siege and Overwatch, which <laughs> require all the attention, all the reasons to be awake, and all the stress. Uh, no, I, I've had I've had a lot of fun this week. I've been, I've been playing um, Siege because uh, I somebody had mentioned Siege in Harv's uh, Discord. And I was like, I haven't played Siege in a while. Let me download it real quick, try it out again. And I fell in love with it again. And then um, we've been playing Overwatch with uh, Harv. And we've been squatting up a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's been, been fun. Because uh, I, I don't normally play with a group like we do. And when you have uh, five or six individuals all lifting out and doing their roles at the same time and feeling that synergy, it feels great. So, yeah, yeah for sure. It, it helps to have a good group of people who know the game and know like okay this is how you play dps this is how you play tank this is how you play support no it's it's been great it's it's a it's a very big uh refreshment to just running solos yeah, yeah no i've i've really enjoyed just because i've been doing it with uh with them for a while now it's kind of nice to have you guys into the mix as well and always having a team to play overwatch because like this is my first run into overwatch and mm -hmm. it's just been one of those things where just like the addiction is real for that game mm -hmm. The addiction is real, so I, I've been having so much fun with that. Yeah, it was one of the multiple games that Harv um, told me to buy this week, um, as Harv has continued to be the person to push me to buy a bunch of stuff, um, including Fall Guys, but we only played Fall Guys once, but we've been playing Overwatch a lot, and I've been having a lot of fun, but yes, um, was one of the list of things Harv has told me to buy, and then a kind of like I like egg me on to buy them because he's just like you want to play you want to play overwatch are you ready to play overwatch you gonna play overwatch and i'm like that is exactly me to a t right there <laughs> <laughs> it's just like fee when are you getting overwatch and i'm like oh my god like it's it the second i buy this game it's gonna go on sale and he's like if it does and easter weekend comes along and if there's a sale for it i will send you ten dollars and there has not been a sale yet so Harv gets to keep his ten dollars until the end of the weekend, and if there's a sale, by golly, I'm going to be like, pay up. <laughs> oh well, you got to pay in loot boxes though. Loot box, exactly. You have to pay in loot boxes, even though that's twelve ninety six or something like that. For... It's fine. I'll, I'll front the two dollars or something. So we'll just put that as tax. We'll put that. No, as no, no, no. Loot box as plural. Yeah, like, is it is it ten bucks for what five of them? No, it's six ninety nine uh, for five, and then it's twelve ninety something for ten. Okay, yeah. there we go. I can give her ten, just like that. Sure. All right. What if? What else have you been playing, Harv? So I started. It takes two. Uh, mm -hmm. this last week I'm finishing it tonight, but uh, I started it last week. It is probably Haze Light's best game that they've made so far. Mm -hmm. When it comes to brothers and uh, a way out, they've it feels like they've learned everything from from that from those two games and put it into it takes two and just made it so much better. Like they've kind of nailed the two player co op couch experience in that game. With like the the one thing that is really really cool about it is like it's like a personal relationship between the two. I guess a way out and brothers was too, but like the way that they meld the personal relationship with the different types of games, like there's platforming in mm -hmm. it. There is uh, for like, like third person shooter. It's got um, a lot of puzzle games. It's got even fighting style too. Like you, like it's like a, uh, like a street fighter kind of type thing. Yep. And how they've all melded it together is really insanely good. And I feel like the story backs up the gameplay as well. I've been excited for this game for a while now, and I don't like. I know, Fee, you've played a little bit of it so far. I have, but, like, yeah. So, what, what, what are your feelings on it right now? Um, I really, honestly, I really enjoyed it. I actually left the podcast early last week to play it with um, a friend of the podcast from the trophy room, um, Joe, and I honestly had a great time. Like, I, unlike you, I only heard about the game. Like, I, I think I saw the trailer a little while ago, but. 
um joe specifically brought the game to my attention was like hey we should play this together and i'm like okay um but i was pleasantly surprised during the entire process like um just like you said i think they really learned from the two first games that they made and then they really up the ante and improved upon that because there was just so many different types of ways to like get through an actual mission and like go through and maneuver through at least i've only made it through the shed i think is what it's called so even through that i was very very impressed the way that you had to work with your teammate and just like coordinate to get through the game yeah because like for 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 a way out it was very it didn't have too much of like co-op experience in a way Mm -hmm. like it was more like get a wrench or something put it to the other side he picks it up and he does something like you know just like like a random thing on the other side and mm-hmm. kind of opens up a door. This one's like very, very co-op heavy, where one person has an item that the other person doesn't, and they have to work together to do certain things. It being going through, uh, getting through like a platforming area, or uh, the like the the third person shooter thing where one person has to like drench something in like this this paste, and the other person has to destroy it with like their rocket launcher and stuff. And it's man, that game is so freaking cute. Like mm-hmm. it Adorable. is insanely cute. I can't wait till you get to one of the parts feet where you you're, you're gonna die with just like how how cute it really really gets. So but I, I'm so excited to finish it, and I think right now it's like a top game for me for this year. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. I think I was like I'm gonna be honest before I pass it over to Mario. I was slightly concerned by the price because I'm like it's fifty dollars. Like that's kind of bonkers for like a game like this. Like I didn't specifically like was i wasn't aware that it was going to be that price then again only one person out of the actual couple needs to actually buy it because the other person can just get the friend pack for free so yeah that's that's the good thing about it the only one person needs to buy it yeah it's pretty great and it runs really well i'm very excited for that so going on to mario what have you been playing you did. Uh, I haven't got a chance. I have honestly have not had the energy to play any video games lately, and it's been kind of a, a slight bummer, but mm-hmm. instead I have been supplementing it with anime. So the only times that I played, obviously, video games was Overwatch. The anime that I have been watching, of course, uh, is catching back up with My Hero Academia with Season 5 mm-hmm. dropping last week. I'm excited for tomorrow, which I believe is another episode. Um, mm-hmm. I'm watching it on Crunchyroll where I created my own account for a trial uh, just to dip my toes in. And it's not dubbed. It is, of course, the Japanese um, uh, language version. And uh, I'm not used to that version because I'm obviously used to the voice acting in the American one. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, I still just sort of fell right back into the world. I knew exactly where we left off. Uh, I'm excited for what possibly the ending of the episode leads to the future of the season. And uh, I want Google to stop mining my data to knowing that I like My Hero Academia <laughs> because it's constantly giving me ads about, hey, this so-and-so happens in the in the book. Are you happy about this future change? And I'm like, shut up, Google. That's my... Yeah, you can you can turn that off. I know. Yeah. I'm just saying. I've just been noticing it a lot, and I'm just like, you suck, and I want to just break you, uh, Google. So I will be t- doing that. Yeah. Um, Specifically, hopefully, for My Hero Academia. But uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, I've been having a great time. I, I, I watched this other show about curses. I don't know. We've heard a lot about it on the show. Uh, <laughs> Jujutsu uh, Kaisen. Uh, <laughs> I, I surprised Fee and Frank by watching the first episode because it was available to me. So I gave it a shot, and I'm intrigued. I'm excited to continue on and see what this best of friendo thing is all about, and this panda man and these curses and... People eat panda f- man. People, yeah. panda man. people uh, panda eating man. fingers and stuff like that. So I'm uh I'm somewhat yeah. intrigued. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This anime is great. This anime is great. Yeah. So, Spoilers well, for the first episode. A man eats a finger. Um, yeah. There's panda mans. <laughs> yeah. Panda man. And uh, panda man. Yeah, so I'm definitely uh, excited to check that out. Otherwise, the only additional thing I've been doing is uh, I've been taking my albums from my rec- records that I've been collecting, and I have artwork all over my wall now. And I will sh- if you go wow. to my if you go on my Twitter, I will show you that. But otherwise, that's all I've been doing. Nice. Well, that's really exciting, and I'm happy that you talked about anime because I was trying to be good and wasn't planning on talking about anime this week. So good job for continuing the weekly talks about anime. 
Um, we'll continue on and ask Sly, what have you been playing? Uh, very similarly, I have also had no energy for video games, which is really sad because I really want to continue Mass Effect, but I just have not had the energy. So instead, I've gotten very invested in the uh, Chicago TV universe. So like Chicago Fire, PD, Med, those shows. And I, <laughs> I'm going and my through, mother. I found a... I I found a spreadsheet, so I'm watching all of it chronologically. So I'm like jumping back and forth between like five different shows. I'm currently in 2016, so I think that's like five seasons into the longest one. I don't know. Okay. But I'm learning a lot about Chicago. Sure. Most of it's probably fiction. <laughs> oh, very. But very. it's been a good time. I'm learning uh, what neighborhoods to avoid when I come visit. Uh, what about Bridgeport? What do they say about Bridgeport? Do they say anything about Bridgeport? I I know it's mentioned a or lot, Canaryville? but off the top okay. of my head, I can't. Yeah, like these okay. are all names that I hear a lot. In the show. You will you will actually, if you pay attention to the show, you will see. Uh, first of all, my cousin was on that show. He's in the background putting his shoes oh, on. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm pretty sure everybody's cousins on that pretty show. Pretty much every, everyone's cousins on that show because <laughs> yeah. they just stroll our neighborhoods, and you will see both me and Frank's like houses at one point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so it's actually filmed in Chicago. Yeah, one hundred percent. They 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 film they Our film a, like yeah. every now and again. I'll wake up and they'll just be outside filming. Oh, Apparently nice. the bar is right next I'm, to Frank, so yeah, that's yeah. exciting. I'm My not favorite. gonna tell you where because that is a hard dox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they go to. Oh, really? That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, they also go to my favorite diner all the time, uh, Bridgeport Diner, which is in Bridgeport. So that's awesome, hilarious. Nice. Oh hell yeah. Yeah, so that's been fun. Um, I have a list of questions of all these different things that happen. Uh, like right before we started recording, I was like, are there really tornadoes in Chicago? Because that's been a big deal in the show. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been fun. Um, I, I wouldn't say I recommend the show, but it's a good time sink. <laughs> Any of those shows are really honestly, when you look at like crime shows and stuff, you get, mm -hmm. you watch like five of them and you like look at the thing and you're like, I'm already three seasons deep. What? <laughs> Yeah, nothing is well, it's harder. Yeah, it's harder because I'm jumping like back and forth because it started with fire. And so just like watch through season one of that. And then they had PD. So I was going back between those two. And then there was meds so that I'm juggling three. And then all of them have like, like there's either once or twice a season where they cross over with Law and Order SVU so that I have to like jump to Hulu and watch an episode. Wow. That's I didn't know they did that. It is the Duke Wolf yeah, universe. So. Yeah, they, they they cross over yeah, a lot. Yeah. That's really um, cool. I will so. tell you one of the fakest things on there is the the response times. <laughs> Other than the fire department, the fire oh, department yeah. in Chicago does a really good job. No, yeah. I'll, I'll give props to the fire department. They're great, but ambulance and police, uh, yeah, no. Uh, they can't even walk across the street fast enough for a lot of things. Yeah. Oh, and uh, one of my friends has been killed on that show multiple times. <laughs> Incredible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, that's a that's a doozy. Um. Yeah, I've been playing Magic Legends this week. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I know I talked about it last week. Um, I made it out of the six-hour tutorial. What up? Um, and my original plan of having a red-green deck has completely dissolved because I now have the Nightmares Squad, which is a black-red deck, and I just mm. have creatures that look like they come from the depths of hell, including Leggy, who is all hands, and he's a massive jawless creature that has a very long tongue and six arms and he crawls around on the ground and makes really weird noises and i have a ghoul kind of creature i have a zombie ram and then it's a lot of fun um it's kind of weird and apparently now i have pestilence and i just kill people that way so it's been going really great for my once <laughs> upbeat kind of game to i now work with a bunch of dead creatures shrug um v i'm also has, playing has that uh, convinced me to download it i have downloaded it. i have because yeah. you watched me yesterday playing it because yeah. i was just like hey you should watch 
you should play this. Even though my creatures are terrifying, there are some really great ones. Um, Lucas tried to <laughs> purge one of my characters. Like, he was trying to get rid of it because he was so terrified by it that he summoned, like, all of his, like, angels slash, like, white deck creatures. And obviously nothing could help with that. So they just, you just see, like, a bunch of, like, blinding light as he's trying to get rid of this terrifying monster. So, that's all I played specifically for Magic Legends. I also played Overwatch, and I've been getting very competitive about that. And by specifically competitive, I mean watching videos and trying to learn how to play, because when I'm not good at something, I try to fix it. So I've been trying to do that. <laughs> and that was playing a lot of it over the past few days. And yeah. And then anime-wise, obviously. Um, Moriarty the Patriot... I started watching Quintessential Quintuplets, and Mars Red is really great. Thumbs up. I'm not going to talk about them. You can look it up your own time. Maybe I'll talk about <laughs> anime in length at some other point, but that's not the time. So, we're going to transition into what last week was the largest segment that we specifically had at 50 minutes. Mm. Nuts. Jesus um, Christ. It was bonkers we're gonna be talking about the patch notes i'm gonna pass this along over to frank and he's Hello. gonna talk about the news yes mind you again i'm still suffering from covid vaccine um yeah. symptoms so if i stumble on my boards please please ignore that uh but the, our first article this week comes from polygon um and this is some actually pretty Big news. Um, Sony's MLB The Show 21 will arrive on Xbox Game Pass at launch by Taylor Lyles. So in an insane last minute weekly announcement from Microsoft, uh, they revealed that Sony San Diego Studios' uh, MLB The Show will be available day one on Game Pass. Uh, I say give a medal to whoever got this deal signed because that is absolutely insane to think about. Um... What do you guys think? I mean, it, it, when you think about it, I was telling Fee earlier, it's insane that not only are we getting a uh, Sony published and developed studio game on a Xbox console, but they also agreed to put their game on their competitors like Game Pass. So either a lot of money has been thrown around or Sony has lost it. And we will see more Sony news later on why people think sony has absolutely lost it but I what, say, what do we think i will say just to preface it i wonder how much of this was actually sony's decision given that a lot of part of this big ip and the reason why it's coming to xbox to begin with is because of mlb and how much they probably pushed for this for them do you think do you, do you think the actual like league Yes. Stepped up for that. I think 100% the league is the one that's fronting a lot of the development costs as well as what they want them to do. The fact that we are getting MLB on Xbox for the first time in decades, at least a decent, <laughs> uh, you know, a major league game. And for this to hit in the way that it is, where, yeah, on Xbox, it's you're going to have a better deal than actually PlayStation, which is <laughs> developing and publishing this, uh, this game, which. On, on PlayStation, it's publishing it. Apparently, on Xbox, it is MLB. So I think this is a massive, huge one-up for Xbox for them to have this license finally come to your platform and to be accessible to everyone that has uh, Game Pass. Uh, it's it's a huge it's a huge win, and I might even play baseball this year. So that's 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 my general take on it. I do want to preface that it's on Xbox Game Pass, not PC Game Pass. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Which, the game could even come out on PC. I think it's only on consoles. I mean, you could still you could try to port it to PC. Like I, I don't see it is streaming. Why not. It is streaming though. Yeah, you can stream yeah. it to your iOS con like like you could actually do the uh, the Game Pass thing where you can play it on your phone and stuff like that, and that's absolutely yeah. free as well. Yeah. Yeah this this is this is massive. Like this is I because like what it was a lot two years ago that they said it was going to come out to different consoles finally. Mm -hmm. Right, that what it, it wasn't going to just be a PlayStation exclusive game, which is massive because it is the only official M MLB game that is a simulation game out there right now, and that coming to all different like coming to Xbox as well. I, I think it's coming to Switch. I don't know if it's coming to Switch, but I think, I think so. the plan was to come to Switch. No, I think I'll, the plan was to come to Switch as well. Yeah, they got and, an eight bit version for Switch coming out. <laughs> <laughs> And the fact that, like, yeah, it being on Game Pass is, I feel like 
it's surprising, but at the same time, not to me because like if you want to put it on Xbox, it I feel like the precedent now is to put everything on Game Pass when something comes on Xbox. Because mm-hmm. it, it might feel weird when a game comes out on, on the Xbox platform when it's not part of Xbox Game Pass. It's like, why isn't this part of Game Pass? Right? It's an Xbox game. So mm-hmm. I feel like maybe at this point, it's like anything that comes out on that platform should just be on Xbox uh, Game Pass at this point. Makes sense. Yeah. I... I yeah. I'll continue. No, no, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, no. I... As the biggest sports game um, expert here, obviously. Um, number one, enthusiast. number one sports th- enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> Not American, baseball. American sports. baseballs. Yeah, sports in general. Yeah, American you know, baseball sports, sports expert. Rugby, yeah. checkers. Exactly. Our resident yeah. Cubs fan. Yeah, that's right. Resident. Well, Sly is now our resident Cubs fan because they've been watching <laughs> Chicago PD. <laughs> I don't care about baseball. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk to me about literally any sport? I am there. <laughs> baseball just isn't. All it. right, let's talk about whirly ball. Oh god, right, there's we're... a lot of hockey on the show. <laughs> that is true. Us Chicagoans, for some reason, love our hockey. Nice, nice. Um, no, I think it's it makes sense in the long run because when. Honestly, when I think of sports games, I think more like Xbox. Um, if I have to think of like consoles in a specific way, I think the Xbox is... I mean this in the nicest way possible. It is the bro console. It is the Halo. It is the shooters. It's the other sports games. It's and the so other it may- sports games? <laughs> the other sports games. It's like whirly ball. Like whirly ball. Can't even yes. name them. Ba- backyard baseball. <laughs> it's the home of the other sports. I'm just games. I'm putting it under the bracket because I know that there are multiple of them. That I'm saying that it's more of the bro console. So for me, it makes sense to see MLB over on Xbox. Does it make sense that, that you can get it for free day one? Whereas with like Sony, there's probably not going to be that particular option. Maybe not, um, but contract-wise, we don't know what's happening behind the scenes, so it might make sense contract-wise slash money-wise, um, but just like we've said, it, like everything, assumably, when it's released on the Xbox now, it's going to be on Game Pass in one shape, like wit, one way, shape, or form. Yeah. So it wouldn't make any sense to release a day one on Xbox and not have it on Game Pass. They might be having to do something differently on their end, um, to be able to release it and have it for free, um, because obviously in some way they're losing money doing this, mm-hmm. but it will entice more people to get the Xbox. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, in my gaming circles, I don't hear anything about these types of games. Sure, but I mean, people people are legit thinking about like because I know a couple people that bought an Xbox yeah. recently because this thing is coming out too. Like not recently today, I, I saw a couple of people buy an Xbox because they know that MLB the Show is coming out for Xbox mm-hmm. on Game Pass day one. I know so that, that's kind like of the that. insane thing because it's just it because like Xbox has been so deprived of like this type of game and then having a deal of it just being on Game Pass, you can't you can't toss that up. Like just get an Xbox Series S and you're good to go. Here, yeah. I'll, I'll broaden it up a bit. I'll broaden it up a bit. The fact that I feel like every week I hear an Xbox gets a win with something on Game Pass, whether it's, yes. you know, Bethesda. Now all your stuff's yeah. on there. Literally last week, hey, all the backwards compatible games are now going to show up on cloud on Game yep. Pass. So mm-hmm. those to me are like constantly win after win after win. And then this is just another win on top of it. It's making me reconsider waiting for a Series X. And then when an S comes around, I just might get it just because I feel like I'm missing out on on these experiences on Game Pass that I could be, you know, uh, ex- experiencing. Um, there's some games that were actually literally announced last week in a four hour press conference that we decided not to cover because it was a four hour press conference and none of us were watching it, uh, where they yeah. announced a bunch of indie games, including Dreambox's new game, 
on an Xbox, which is crazy. Um, they, those titles look fantastic, and there are, some of them are out right now. You could play them on Xbox, like mm-hmm. Narita Boy and um, Genesis Noir, which looks amazing. Um, I wish I could sit on my couch and play that right now on the next-gen console. So I'm even considering just... I want an Xbox, but I was considering on getting an S just because I wanted to have that that box. So I think this is a win for them for propelling me, the consumer, to want to buy their console, to play these experiences and jump in, jump out in the way that I want to. So, uh, yeah, I think overall, great win for Xbox. I think it's also a win for Sony in some aspects. It's still their game going on, you know, Game Pass, and they're getting money from this in some direction, you know, but at the yeah. same time. There had to be a contract for them. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. Microsoft yes. had to have thrown a, a, a bunch of million dollars in order for yeah. them to get it on Game Pass. Like, for them to get it, they probably had to pay money. But for them to get it on Game Pass, they had to pay. They had to have paid a little extra. Um, yeah. I would, I would say this. If you were a Sony fan, or, like, if you just bought a PlayStation 5, and that's all you owned right now, how do you think you would feel if, like... You know, the, you had to pay sixty dollars, but your competitor's console, um, you can technically get it for fifteen bucks or a dollar. In a lot of, if you've never had Game Pass before, yeah, it sucks. It's, uh, I would <laughs> like, say that's it sucks. why Game Pass is so good. Yeah. Because, like, what if you know oh, sorry, if I I was so fortunate that I was able to get both a Series S and a PlayStation 5 at or, or around launch. And, like, I mean, I played on my PS5 what I played Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and, like, a couple other games. But my Xbox has gotten so much use because of the backwards compatible, because of Game Pass, because I can go, oh, that looks fun. I'll try it out for, like, 20 minutes. At no harm done, right? Like, this is why it's such a good deal. And this game has been so tied to PlayStation. So many people get a PlayStation just to play this game, and now you can get it free on another platform. Like, that has to suck. Yeah, yeah, it definitely has to suck. It's like it's like if, if they said, hey, the next Horizon Zero Dawn's coming to Xbox, but it's also, they're getting it on Game Pass, but everybody on Sony now has to pay $60 or $70 now for this game to play it it's it just it, it's a weird move and it just doesn't it, it feels weird for a, another company to bolster somebody else's options especially yeah. when your fan base is probably very pissed off at you especially for the oh frank frank is oh. in the matrix hello oh hello okay hello. you, you went like go. this there we go. and then you're good I, I didn't hold my hands up, so I have no idea what you did. No, I, I meant you froze. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was the last thing I said? <laughs> Something I, about bolstering. <laughs> yeah, bolstering your competitors. Uh, go, bolstering your competitors. Um, uh, or catalog. Yeah. 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 But um, I yeah I would be a very angry Sony Sony person, especially with the other news this week, which we will transition to. Uh, our next article comes from IGN. Uh, PlayStation Store shut down dates for PS3, PS Vita, and PSP officially announced by uh, Matt Kim. Bat- Matt T.M. Kim, actually. Um, Why so, is there... It, it's, it's shorthanded. Matt, it's a that's trademark us. versus his, no, 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 his yeah, initials. His name's actually Matt T.M. Kim. Yes. It, it accidentally did that. Uh, <laughs> Sony's not feeling very well this week. After uh, last week's rumors of PSP, PS3, and PS Vita legacy stores shutting down, Sony has officially confirmed that the stores will be shutting down in the summer and early fall. So the dates, I believe, last week were correct. July 2nd for PSP and PS3. August 27th for the Vita. That's crazy. <laughs> it's like right around the corner. Um, you think they'd give people a little bit more leeway to uh, to maybe buy a few games, stuff like that, especially during a pandemic where people don't really have the money to be spending on games, let alone legacy titles. Uh, yeah, it's it's not looking good at Sony right now. It definitely isn't, especially when um, you have stuff like the Game Pass thing going on, and then you have this where like. Xbox is like, hey, we'll, we're going to take all our backwards compatible titles that we have currently right now, 
and we're going to throw them on Game Pass. And then you have Sony like, well, we're just going to get rid of all of our backwards titles, <laughs> and you can't buy them at all. Um, I think we talked a lot about it last week, but um, I do have a, a new question for this week. Uh, do you think Sony has a plan or a way to appease its audience with a way to be able to access these legacy titles? Or do you think they'll just kind of remain as silent as, as, as they have been for like the last month or two, actually? Oh, I doubt they're going to do anything. <laughs> like, it, I would be so shocked if Sony said anything about this or did anything about this. I think they're just going to try at least quietly sweep it under the rug. Like, oh, we're shutting down these stores and then not say anything about it and not do anything about it. Two, there's two things that I think about this. This one is that I kind of wish they would do a virtual console thing for this. Mm. Like what Nintendo yeah, does yeah. with their virtual console and do something for PSP, Vita, and PS3 on um, on PS on the PS5. That would be cool. Or even on the PS4 as well. The other thing is I think it's the biggest it's the big news now, but I think in about like three, four months, or when this stuff like just kind of goes. It's just gonna happen, and nobody's really gonna bat an eye. Cause like I, I, I wish I could see the analytics of how many people actually buy games from those stores, from say like a PSP Vita or a PS3. Because like there's probably a reason why they're doing this, right? To to, to see like maybe it's not worth it to have them out there. I know the preservation thing is a very very big thing because we don't want to lose these games. So that's why I wish they would do like a virtual console. But I don't mm-hmm. think they're going to do anything like that since they really haven't given us any idea that they will. No, the only indication we've ever had something was during the PlayStation 4 era where they were like randomly, hey, guess what? You can play some PS2 games on your PS4. If you want to play Grand Theft Auto again, here it is. Max Payne, Dark Cloud. <laughs> and then that but was like $20, <laughs> you know, Star Wars titles. But that was it. And there was not, there was another, there was never a major push for those. There wasn't big, yeah. like big marketplace with a PlayStation two games. It really was a handful. So for them to go forward. And I, I honestly want, I, I want to believe that they'll eventually package this thing. And yes, there would be a, some sort of like repackaging where all these games work on PS five. I would love that. But as Sly said, I just don't see it. Um, if anything, we'll get a remaster of every single one of these in the future. But Right now, all I just want all two thousand games. All two thousand games, yeah, including all your all your licensed games. This is the this is this is why I'm starting to get slowly back into physical media again, is because all these licensed games are going the way of the dodo bird. And uh, we need if you really cared about any of them, and honestly, a lot of licensed games are not the greatest, but there are some gems. Then yeah, this is the only way. The only way is going to have to reach out and go to your local. Uh, gaming stores and see what they have that they're going to charge now oh my god uh, if you go to exchange any of the gaming stores they're going to like up their value now on each of those games that are no longer on a digital store so grab yeah, your persona that's how you can it's such a like sony's like just their their mentality this generation is so, so polarizing compared to how they were at the beginning of the ps4 era or like Hey, you can play these games on any console. Here, you you can trade you can trade your games in. You can give these physical copies to people, stuff like that. And then, like, completely just like destroying all kind of all that goodwill within like almost a year, kind of uh, with with all these changes and everything like that. Um, I hope they have a plan because it just seems like they're kind of just going at it like they just don't really care yeah this is and that's not, usually oh sorry go ahead no i was say like this is not the days of the adam boyds the uh Kazurais, the uh jack trends the uh uh the old school where I, I felt like they were doing something during the ps4 era and now we have i think mark ryan is his name and every time mm. i hear a quote from him he just sounds befuddled as to why people care about old stuff so you care about sony's pedigree Thanks for the lackluster PlayStation Classic that I have. That's only 20 games on it. I had to put Rugrats on that bitch myself. <laughs> oh, Rugrats wasn't really a great game, so I'm glad they omitted it. Fucking great game, great uh, mini game game. Anyways, continue. Fee, well, I just wanted over there. <laughs> yeah, Fee, what, what, what do you have to say? <laughs> um, 
It's a it's a toss up. Like I see why in some regard why they're doing this because the way that they've been really treating the Vita, especially in the West, um, over the past few years has essentially been quite lackluster. I'm not gonna like kind of sugarcoat it there. Um, and then the PSP, I'm honestly I'm slightly shocked that it still has a store in some regard. And then the PS3, like. I would have assumed that that probably would have, like, trickled off a little bit after they stopped offering, like, PS3 games when they were doing the, like, PS Plus. Um, but it kind of make like, it sucks to see this happen because I know a lot of people still use these consoles and handhelds and having that portion um, and those stores kind of closing down, it really limits the people who are actually using them consistently still. And it limits them, um, and now they have to go through, like, scalpers, or they have to go to secondhand stores and hope for the best to try to get those types of items. Um, but, on the other hand, I'm slightly hopeful that maybe this means that they might be putting more of a focus on new content. Maybe, who knows, maybe a new handheld because they decided to shut down two of their handheld stores, or maybe they're just shutting that portion of their history down and then trying to look forward and just paying attention to the PlayStation 5. Either way, I'm hopeful, but it's really sad to see these go because a lot of the news that we've seen recently coming out of Sony in comparison to Microsoft is it's a lot of we're shutting stuff down, we're doing this, we're limiting this, we're going over this way. And then we see Microsoft, and I'm not trying to, like, I'm not a... Microsoft fan by a uh, fanboy or fan person by any means like I like Xbox and I like Microsoft but we're seeing a lot of positive things coming out of Xbox whereas we're seeing a lot of negativity when it comes to PlayStation so here's hoping over the next few months it kind of becomes clear why they're doing this but shrug I don't know it's like it's a slight bummer for sure I feel like their whole mindset when it came to the PS4 is because they were behind, right? They yeah. felt like they were behind. Now PS5 is ahead, and I feel like we're just we're just seeing the 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 switch again now. But I f- do feel like PS5 is still selling more than what Xbox was selling, right? Or Xbox still isn't showing numbers. I think I think that's really what it is. Also yeah. It's kind of hard year. to tell right now, especially with the with the shortage of um, yeah, yeah. Of consoles. Also, yeah, yeah. With yeah the shortage people of are kind of just yeah. grabbing whatever they can. Yeah. Um, no. I have seen PS5s be a little bit more readily available, but then again, I've only seen people try to buy PS5s, so I'm, I'm not sure if uh, no. if Xbox has been more. Or less. I mean, readily available is a very, very odd term to say because. Oh, I mean, like they're, every they're week you'll see a PlayStation then, show but up, but they're sold out like this. Like yeah, they're yeah. just sold out constantly, yeah. right? So yeah, they 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 are still selling. So I I to me like. For me, this doesn't affect me at all because I have a PS3, but I never play my PS3. I have a PSP, never play my PSP. Yeah. Vita, never played. So, like, I know we had this discussion last year, old game is old, right? Or old media is old. But, like, yeah. I haven't touched these consoles or anything like that in years. So, I, yeah, for me, it's like, it is what it is. Like, I'm, I'm okay well, with it. And, I'll, and this is the last thing I'll say about it. I, if it was promoted to me as something new, then I could see what I missed out on. Then maybe I would buy. Like I don't know what's on the PSP because I missed out on that platform entirely. On the Vita, there are certain aspects that I wish. Like, hey, guess what? This is the first time you get to play Golden Abyss on your PS5. Like, I would have been awesome. You know, like if they could do that. Um, like yeah. I said, if they could do a virtual console thing, that'd be awesome. Yeah. The Golden Abyss on the PS5 would be yeah. great. Switch some of the controls because, like, you know, because I know they have those back buttons on, on the on the Vita yeah. that are used for stuff. Now it's the front touch. Yeah, yeah it's, front you touch. Could, it's a touch screen technically, so you could probably just use the uh, the dual the senses pad. Uh, pad. Yeah. yeah. So, like, dude, if they did a virtual thing for, like, like not even all the games, just the big titles for the PSP and stuff like that, that would be huge for them. They would make so much money off of that. And I think people would not make a bigger deal out of it. But I still do think next year, I don't think many people are going to make a big deal out of it anyways. I think it's yeah. just right now that, that we have the dates and like, oh my god. But I think in about a year, it'll probably just be whatever. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I, just to kind of like, at a, end it at a specific though, I, like, I still don't have a PlayStation 5. I still don't have the new Series X. But 
it's mostly because I currently have Game Pass, and I'm more than happy to just play the games that I have on Game Pass, and then the few games that I have on Blizzard, because Harv made me buy them, and then we have, like, just the free games that I've been getting with, like, Epic and Stadia that I'm to a point where I'm like, I don't know what's on the PlayStation 5 that I feel the urge to buy one right now. And I think that here's hoping that they put more of a focus on things that might entice more people because right now let's be honest the majority of the people that are buying the playstation 5s are ones that are trying to get access to games that they might they may not have had access to the playstation 4 or they're trying to play games specifically coming like coming this year on the playstation 5 or it's a scalper because scalpers love to buy those consoles out like it's candy um, and try to upsell the bejeebas out of it because I'm still seeing that where people are selling them for like $1,200 plus. So here is, I'm hoping that we kind of see it kind of even out a little bit, but with the shortages the way that they are, even with the capture cards and all those like um, ga um graphics cards and stuff like that, wait, might not. No. I've played my no. PS5 once for Demon Souls. And I have yeah, not turned it on right. since. Yeah, I've not turned right. it on since. I have a very expensive door shop right now. I just want to say, a very very expensive door shop. <laughs> yeah, mine's still not even. You plugged went in. through so much effort just to get that PS. I, I remember. And you're I, yeah, not I was, even oh, using it. You, it for a game that's going to be on PC else that night. Yeah. And, 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 but that's the thing. I buy everything on PC, right? When I can. Yeah. So when yeah. when a PlayStation game comes out, I rather if it's going to be on PC. I'd rather just play it on PC. Oh, it was gonna be. It is still gonna be. What? Yeah, eventually. Dark Demon Demon's Souls. Souls? The game, yeah, when the over. game was announced, I it doubt. said captured on PC. I know. No, not that one. <laughs> well, that captured one. on PC has nothing to do with them releasing it. No, on no, no, PC. no, no. A I'm lot of games eventually, are it most likely will be on PC. Demon Souls yeah. was not captured on PC. That was that was the uh, the Final Fantasy game. That was uh, not Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. It was the Square game that was captured on PC. The Demon Souls was on P PS5. I don't think that game is going to come out on PC. I know that little card that they had at the end, but I don't think that game is going to come out on PC. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'll end it. I'll end it with this. I just think it's hyper ironic that the title that you, the one of the first titles everybody plays on the PS5 is Astro's Playroom, which it, which plays a lot on Sony's history and nostalgia, um, and it's super ironic that they will you know market that as their platform and market all of those look at all these games look at how many games we used to have like look at all old resident evils look at all the like, stuff like stuff like that and then immediately delete all of them and not have any way for their for their fan base to play them i think it's such a dumb move but on that note uh just like last week i think we did it last week right yes, yes. just like last week we're adding a segment to the news uh, when it comes up, or when Mario kind of wants to, called Mario's Movie Madness, where he discusses movie news whenever he wants to. So take it away, home skillet biscuit man. Uh, so to keep it short for this week, I'm actually going to just do the movie quickie news. So all the quick hits here. So that, way, so that way I can get some uh, quick opinions on these. So uh, first of all, Witcher Season 2 has wrapped filming. Uh, by the way, all my sources are coming from SlashFilm.com, so I love that website. Please visit it for all the news. But uh, Witcher Season 2 has finally wrapped uh, filming. Who uh, likes the Witcher TV show here? Anybody here? If he likes it, Barrett likes it. I like it. Witcher. Like it? I like Witcher. Sly, give it a Witcher. shot. It's uh, it's very okay. bisexual as hell. Yeah, I got the I'm down. Yeah. Witcher. <laughs> I, I put a Witcher medallion on my lighter. Yes. I like Witcher. Incredible. Uh, yes. I, uh, I too, am fascinated with uh, Henry Cavell's abs, so I'm very excited to see him in <laughs> season two of The Witcher. Uh, you can grind meat off them motherfuckers. Oh, my God. And he'll be building a PC at the same time. Oh, shit. <laughs> second, second piece of news. Uh, Eli Roth's Borderlands has started filming. Of course, this is the Eli Roth uh, from the people that brought you Hostel and uh, Cabin Fever. And uh, the cast, of course, is the oddest one with uh, Kate Blanchett as Lilith, uh, uh, Kevin Hart as Roland, and a bunch of other wacky casting news. Uh, are we excited for this or no? No, I'm not, not even. absolutely no. not even like close. No, I love Borderlands. <laughs> I love the series like to I love with a passion. 
But this movie sounds like it's going to be dog shit. It sounds like it's going to be absolute dog shit. So I'm not giving it yeah. any more uh, breath. Uh, news that makes me sad. Uh, <laughs> Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City, by the way, fucking love the title, uh, is delayed till Thanksgiving. Uh, how many of us are going to go see this versus uh, going to San Diego Comic-Con? I'm going to raise my hand. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to go I'll see this. I'll probably say yes to this. I'll probably see it. But what? Excuse me. What is with everybody scheduling shit for Thanksgiving? I <laughs> like. Do people not go see? This is where our do people not dreams. eat at home anymore? <laughs> well, actually, if you remember, Frank, when I went to Thanksgiving at your house, I left it so I can go see Aquaman. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> everything is scheduled around Thanksgiving. You, you bang banged my house. You I came. Did. You ate my food, and then you just left to go see Aquaman. <laughs> Fucking right, I did. Um, Thank Jesus I'm, Christ. I love Resident Evil. I love the dumb movies. They're dumb, and I love them. God, Harv, you got something to say? So this is a reboot? It's a reboot of it's the first game and the second game together. Have we seen any trailers on this? No, yet? there's just been uh, casting announcements and uh, there have been photos from the set that look retro as hell. It takes place in 1989, uh, 1998, I'm sorry. And uh, it looks awesome. Very I can't different wait. years. Yeah, sorry. Very different <laughs> decade. Um, yeah. But I am very, very excited for this because oh. the casting also looks awesome. And uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm, ex- I'm hoping, I'm hoping the best. No, I you, mean, you, you got, you got me excited now. You got me excited for this because this looks like this looks like a cool project. Yeah, the fact that they're combining both the first, there, there, there's no Alice in this. It's literally just uh, Jill and Chris and uh, Leon and Claire. And then the movie is going to evolve oh, the two okay. games. And they apparently have replicated the uh, the police department, like the hall RPD. Yeah, so they've actually apparently recreated it, and I'm so excited. (laughs) This is everything I wanted out of a Resident Evil movie. Well, we'll see. We haven't seen footage yet. Yeah, I mean, hey, he might be there, which is really cool. They got they got Ada though, which is awesome. Yeah, Yeah, they have a tyrant. Yeah, Yeah. they'll most likely have a tyrant of some sort. And Wesker's in here too, so I wonder if they're going to do the ending oh, yeah. of like Rocket like, Launcher yeah. stuff. Um, I'm, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, they got they got they got Birkin, they got Irons, mm-hmm. they got everybody. Yeah, I wonder awesome. if the yeah. movies are going to be simultaneous at the same time, but I don't know if that makes sense at all. <laughs> it doesn't, um, it, because I believe one takes place three to six months before two does. So we'll see. We'll <laughs> see how they yeah. handle it. But uh, I'm excited for Resident yeah. Evil. Look- Welcome to Raccoon City. Because Jill's not even in two, is she? No, Jill's she's in three. Well, Jill's in two. She's in another part of the city at the same time. Yes. So that does yeah. happen at the coinciding times. So yeah. two and three happen at the same time. One and two are yes. months apart because yes, one takes place in the Spencer Mansion. Yes. Uh, in Resident Evil two and three, Chris ha- Chris is nowhere to be found. Chris, like yes. that's why uh, the whole reason for uh, Claire to be coming into Raccoon City is to look for Chris. So I wonder how this is going to be. Like, is this? Are they going to do the first game and then just just get rid of Jill and Chris entirely for like the second part of the movie? I, I don't, I don't know. know. Claire in. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. We'll they're probably they're probably rewriting the story a little bit. God, to, I, need, like, fit. I need I need yeah. I need some corny dialogue. Give me some of that corny ass dialogue that you have in Resident Evil Two. I'm down, man. Let's go. <laughs> Jill, don't open that door. That's what I want. Just give me that, please. Um, we shouldn't keep meeting like this. We should exactly. So yeah, th- that is uh, Mario's uh, movie madness. My- Mario's quickie news. Uh, I'm excited for Resident Evil. Thank you. I'm also excited for Resident Evil. Fee, I'm going to give it right back to you. Fantastic. I thank you for that. Thank you for your movie section and all your movie news. We're going to get right into the next segment, which we're- I'm going to be passing this over to Harv. It's going to be the pitch, and I'm going to let him talk all about it, and I'm not going to spoil it for you. So <laughs> Every time we talk about the pitch, my brain just goes, the pitch. <laughs> Every we time. To, we need to just like the drum. Sound by here. Uh, so the, the pitch that I have for pitch. this week. The pitch that I have for this week is uh, a game called The Witness by Jonathan Blow. With his company, I think Never it's called Thecla. So this is a, if you like puzzle games, this is the game for you. This is the game for you. So like, so you are on an island and it's a first person game and you go through series of puzzles to unlock what happened on the island and what the history of the island is. And each section of the, the island has its own kinds of puzzles. So the puzzles are like, it's like a, it's like you're, they're trying to teach you like a language 
to unlock what happened on the actual island itself. So they get more complicated. For, so you have one section that starts off pretty easily because they want to teach you like the fundamentals and the basics of it. And then as you progress through that part of the island, they get much harder. And then once you go through about six or seven sections, they start adding the stuff that you learned previous and combining it with another, ver- like another part of the island's puzzles as well. So you're kind of doing two or three things at, it, at the same time. And then while you're doing that, you're just unlocking these little Easter eggs that are happening, little like little speakers that kind of show you what kind of dialogue, what happened during that time, like that kind of stuff. And people have like went there for archaeological digs and like what happened to them. And it just kind of this this history of this island just kind of opens up as you start doing the puzzles. It is it is a it's it's a very simple game. Like it looks very simple. Like it's not very graphical intensive, but. It feels very isolating, but very thought-provoking at the same time, too, because you're the only person there. There is nobody else there. And you try to figure out what happened to the people that are there, why people are, like, encased. And, like, it kind of feels like they've been encased from, like, a volcano kind of type thing, like like a Mount Suvius, where they're, like, stuck in a place because of, uh, like, a volcano kind of, like, hit it or something like that. So you kind of see, like, like what people... Like Pomp- yeah, that's Yeah, that, that's the... That's the that's the place that I was thinking of. Um, so, honestly, if you like puzzle games, this is the the perfect perfect game because it is also now seventy six percent off right now. If you're listening to it right now, it's seventy six. It's like ten bucks. Wow. So <laughs> nobody's listening to it right now. <laughs> <laughs> they will be right. We're live now. We've been live this whole time. We're live. Yeah. It was free. It was free a couple times, wasn't it? It was free. It was free on PlayStation for a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think it was free on Epic as well at some point. Yeah. Uh, but seriously, God, if you guys like puzzle games, this is this is one of the perfect games that I I think because I I played Maquette last week. I didn't think the puzzles were great, but that game just like reminded me of playing The Witness because the puzzles in that game were just really fun. Because like I remember playing it with my my roommate at the time, and we. <laughs> He brought out his notebook and just started drawing all the little puzzles and be like, okay, so it doesn't go this way, but you can go this way. Because like some of them are like optional areas that are really complicated. Like you don't have to, you don't like there's a main story where you can just kind of go through, but there's these side rooms where they start adding all the mechanics together. Like there's four or five different mechanics all together for like a room for puzzle for puzzles. And like if you look at his notepad, it's like a madman was scribbling in there because we we're just trying to figure out how to do this. And it, it's a, it's a really cool thing if you if you have somebody to play with and just kind of figuring this stuff out too. So that I I recommend or I pitch the witness <laughs> by Jonathan Blow, and I will now pour sand on the Midnight Society fire. <laughs> I have no idea what that meant, but I I like I like this. Um, I feel like I feel like the the way of the puzzle games have kind of lost their kind of lost what they were trying to do. Uh, I feel like puzzle games have become way too easy. Um, the puzzles become way too predictable, um, and it sounds cool to have your friend over here have to jot down notes in order to to play this game because that just comes to show that like yeah the puzzles are going to be a little difficult, but a little difficulty never hurt anybody. No, I, that's I lo- I love pu- difficult puzzle yeah, games. I love I, them. I fucking love difficult puzzle games. The reason why I love horror games because you know the at least the older horror games, the newer ones kind of the puzzles kind of suck. But um, the games like Silent Hill and the old school Resident Evils where you actually have to think about like, oh, I actually have to use logic to figure out this puzzle instead of this this hole slots into that hole, square hole, triangle hole, circle hole. Oh, man, I'm so smart. Like, come on. <laughs> that sounds like a PlayStation puzzle. Exactly. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question for the people that are not, uh, has, said, has said anything about puzzles. Do y'all fuck with puzzles? Sly and, and Feet, y'all have puzzle games? I like puzzles um i mentioned a couple weeks back i was playing through baba's you i didn't get super far but i was really enjoying that uh one of the first games i ever played was a little game on the game boy called uh piglet's big adventure i don't know (laughs) if y'all played it Tell me it is a Winnie the Pooh game. Is it a Winnie the Pooh game? It's a Winnie the Pooh game and it's kind of like a puzzle game it's like puzzle light um, but <laughs> that was one of the first games I ever played. I like puzzle games. 
I just have the attention span of a goldfish. And I really enjoy playing puzzle games. I just can't do them alone. I, I just don't have the willpower for that. So I started The Witness ages ago. And I I thought it was pretty. It looked great. And the puzzles were fun. I just couldn't like sit through it. And so I'd love to go back to it at some point. Because um, I, I barely got into it. Like maybe a couple puzzles in but i enjoy them i just never have the willpower to finish them for sure i uh the two games that i really want to buy and dedicate time to and i'm i'm, I'm just terrified of them because i'm afraid that I'm, I'm gonna not make it through and i don't want to resort to cheating either but the two games that are most and it's not so much like number puzzles or any of those puzzles it's these sort of like weird object puzzles so for instance there's two games that i'm really excited that i want to try one is called subliminal where it's you're in a hallway and then you grab something in the hallway and you put it forward in your face and now it's the size of that, you know, like sort of abstracty like Maquette is the same kind of way. Maquette has a very similar thing where it's like you put the small thing in the small room, but you're in a bigger version, so it's bigger on the outside. Like stuff like, like size puzzles and stuff like that. The way that like the walls will fall in front of you, like those cool like mind twisty puzzles. The other one, of course, is I believe it's called uh, Blessing. Is a bit was talked about it on the Blessing Show called Manifold Garden that looked also incredible that I really wanted to explore and try, but I just get so like terrified. <laughs> that I feel like I'm wasting my own time, and I, uh, I honestly, I honestly might even play uh, with a witness on stream at some point because I like this yes. gets me hyped to play that again. Sure, because like like this 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 game isn't anything about like uh, looking at something like a cat watch style. These are like, like there's a line puzzle where you have to take like one part of the line and get it to the other end, mm -hmm. but you have to do certain things on the way to do like you have to do certain things. And the funny thing is, I was so close to the platinum trophy in this game. Oh wow! And I was at the very end for like the I finished the story, but this is like a, like a like a side side area. The problem with it was that every time you do it, puzzles change. Oof. And um, ah, it, the puzzles Oof. were so hard. They were, so, and you have a time limit too to do them. Yeah. Oh. To do the so tags. the procedurally generated. <laughs> Yeah, the procedurally generated. Jeez. Oh, I and like this game do, even more. You have now. to do ten. <laughs> this is like the final thing to do. Like this is if you want like the hundred yeah. percent trophy list. Yeah. And there's ten puzzles that you have to do, and they're procedurally generated, and you have a time limit for to finish all That's ten. Great. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Anyways, Phoenix, you were playing you were, the shit out uh, of this. How, how do you like puzzle games, guys? Um, this isn't even me joking. Um, as a huge like point and click adventure fan. Um, something that goes hand in hand with that is puzzles in the game. Um, one of my favorite games that I actually used to play with my sister all the time, and you guys know my obsessive compulse to like buy them when they're on sale, which is the Nancy Drew series, um, which I have 15 currently out of like the 29 of them. I, I right when I saw your Steam library, I was like, why do you have so many Nancy Drew games? None of them installed either. They're just yeah. like uh, sitting well, there grayed out. I, I do plan on playing them. And it's honestly like a lot of that is a lot of puzzles and you have to like figure out clues and go through that way. So something like The Witness is definitely up my alley because I do enjoy the puzzle portion. Am I very good at puzzles? Maybe not. And by maybe, I mean, but I... <laughs> And for people who are listening, I just shook my head. Um, but I really enjoy them overall because it kind of gets you to think. And it gives you progress, obviously, in the story. Um, even when I play Ace Attorney, the same thing. There's um, certain puzzles in certain areas where you have to search. So I think it kind of goes hand in hand. And honestly, probably some of my favorite genres include puzzles. So I'm all about this. And honestly, I looked at some of the photos as you were telling us about it. Honestly, was not what I was expecting. And two, I love it. Like, I love the vibrancy of the colors and just the way that I see certain puzzles being played through it. I'm all bored to actually play The Witness, and I'm very excited to try it out later on. I Honestly, I think, Fee, you're going to really, really enjoy this game because um, I, I've had, and it's, like I said, it's on sale right now. It's 11 bucks Canadian. Mm -hmm. So this is my weekly thing to see on Stadia? Damn it! I, Wait, I, I <laughs> thought I heard angry. Stadia. 
I'm actually angry that I'm now buying another game because Harv told me <laughs> to buy a game! No! I'm gonna buy it afterwards, guys. It's inevitable. Don't do that. Let's, Let's just play Dead by Daylight and call it a day. Oh my goodness. Or Overwatch because I need to get better at Overwatch. <laughs> Either way. Um, if I, I love play it. Overwatch with you, it'll make you feel better about how bad you are. <laughs> I mean, it's honestly, it's a lot of fun, and we've been playing with some great people, so... Yeah, Fee's if actually want... really good. Fee's a, Fee give, doesn't give herself enough credit. She she, ar- she already does a lot better than most people who have played the game for a long time do. And I appreciate I just want to say, I just want to say, Yep. Witness is on sale until the 5th of April, so oh, do what you want with that. Oh, thank you. Plenty yeah. of time. Three days. Awesome. For the people who are listening to this, it's already over. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this was you cannot buy the witness. This was more for fee. <laughs> <laughs> this was all an elaborate plan for Harv to convince me to buy another game. Yeah, if he asked me, "Do you want to do the pitch?" I was like, "Yes, excellent, yes. <laughs> excellent." <laughs> Never again together. will I host the podcast and Harv is doing the pitch because that <laughs> is dangerous for my wallet. Um, I mean, let's just say that every um, time um, Harv does the pitch, now I'm renaming it to Harv. Uh, tries to make Fee buy another game. Yeah, I gotta do one per week, apparently. <laughs> no. Absolutely <laughs> not. Uh, oh my god. Well, thank you so much again for the pitch, and I will definitely be checking it out, like I said. Um, but before we end it off, we're going to complete one listener question. One listener question, because we all love to chat about that. So, Sly, we have a list of listeners questions on the page i already know what i'm doing excellent which one are you choosing (laughs) so this is from kelsey when i saw her post it it was the week i wasn't going to be on the podcast so i immediately texted her my answer because i needed my answer to be out there and uh it's on the list so i'm assuming you haven't talked about it yet the question is if a giraffe wore a necktie, would it be at the top of its neck or down at the base of the neck by the shoulders? I have a very clear answer for what is right. So I want to hear what you guys think. It I drew would a be... diagram. Oh, you actually <laughs> have oh, that's right, you drew a picture. She still has it. Okay. Yeah. I still have this diagram. So for people who are listening, I apologize and I will post a picture on my Twitter once this episode has been released. So this is what it is. And so, obviously, this is incorrect. Do not wear the tie up near the, like, the base of, like, the actual head. Because this doesn't make any sense. It's going to slide down. It's not going to work. It looks stupid. This makes sense. Because, obviously, in this scenario, since he's wearing a tie, he's obviously wearing a blazer. So, it makes more sense to have it near the shoulders. So, then the tie fits in with the actual ambiance in the ensemble so <laughs> near the shoulders i love you added thank- the detail about the blazer <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming to my ted talk and if anyone else um says i'm wrong um i'm right you're wrong and shut up i apologize for taking that from eugene from the try guys but in this case i'm right i mean i agree uh, hear me <laughs> out you're half right if you're wearing a long necktie Absolutely. It has to be base of the shoulders. But if it was like a bow tie or a choker, it would definitely go at the top. If it was a choker, if it's a choker or a bow tie, it's at the top. But if it's like a necktie, like a long tie or like a necklace, it's at the bottom. And then Kelsey followed up with the question, if they got in a neck whipping fight, would the necktie like fly to the top of the neck because the like width difference on the neck no, or no, would no. it be snug enough no, to no. be able to for one all bottom? of you are wrong hard no. take it away <laughs> no because like i'm putting this i'm putting this in perspective of humans how humans wear ties right we uh-huh. put it you put it into the collar of the shirt always uh-huh. we don't put it up here where our, where our fucking bottom of our neck or the top of our neck is we put it in the collar or the the collar of the shirt so what fee, the second diagram that fee put out is right because okay. that's where the collar of the shirt was if you had a collared shirt that took out the entire neck all the way up to like where the head is maybe then yes i would i would say yes 
right? You, you would need you, a you would you need a mighty fine uh, blazer for that one though. That that's yeah. a big that's a big blazer. Big fucking blazer. Yeah, but Mario, like it has to be at, at the even even at a bow tie. Bow tie doesn't go up here. I'm pointing at my neck at the top of my neck. It goes into the shirt collar still. So I think both of them would have to be in the shirt collar, where the that's, where the shoulders start. That's supposing that the in this hypothetical. Animal styling. You're supposing there's a shirt present. What if there if, was if no I'm, shirt? Would you still say the tie, bow tie was at the bottom? If I'm wearing just a tie silly. with no shirt, if I'm wearing a tie with no shirt, throw the tie away. What are you doing? Burn it. Yeah, you're going all tie Max Payne. <laughs> yeah, tie does not work. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense. It makes sense down here okay. because once for again, one, you're wrong too. But I'll, we'll get we'll get we'll get to we'll get to the right way to do it. Mara, do you agree with that? Do you agree with them? What if he has like a clip on tie? <laughs> oh my fucking it's the, god! It's the same okay. thing. It's the same okay. thing. <laughs> so here's how you do it. Here, here, here's the real way. Okay, we already know that giraffes overcompensate. All right, look at their fucking necks. All right, they're already overcompensating just by that. All right, so they wouldn't wear just one tie. In fact, they would wear either multiple on their neck, or you could do it like this, where they're wearing a tie per leg. Wait, what? Her leg? Yeah. So they would have ties all around them. And know? if it was or a, they would just be wearing multiple no. ties down the neck. If it was a Nick Car- Carpino uh giraffe, he would wear it over his head, sort of like in Die Hard, you know, just like I didn't think Actually, that's the, thing. as a person that just wore his tie on his head, it's not a great look. Yeah. They would just Carp- fucking what? <laughs> they would they would just curl their long ass necks into like a bow tie anyway. It's fine. Mario, can, no can I have an editing request? Absolutely. <laughs> can you put in images of people wearing ties without shirts on? Yes. yes. So, so, <laughs> to prove so, my point. So, so strippers. This is what we're talking about. Yeah, so strippers. About. So male strippers. I'm playing male Just strippers. fucking banana hammocks and like <laughs> no, it's the shortest be... tie ever. <laughs> All right. Let's just let's put out magic mic here for the next two hours. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they wear ties. I think they wear bow ties anyways. Mario, can you in the point in progress uh, loading bar? Can you just put a picture, like pictures of each of the cast of Magic Mike, just the eyes? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Any more requests before uh, we end this episode? <laughs> can you add a tie to everybody in the in the? <laughs> just like right here. Well, and everyone stand up okay, straight. Okay. I just want to say, I just want to say right here. Okay, this this picture that slide just put in into into Discord, which if you want to put it here on the podcast right in front of us, the sh- the the tie the bow tie still has the shirt underneath. It still has the shirt underneath. Yeah, it has a little bit of cloth. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Okay, yeah. So I'm just saying, it's there, right? I don't know why he's wearing the collars. That doesn't make any sense. Why? He's well, have you ever, the ever seen Jackass? We're gonna get flagged no. for that. I don't know. The, 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 no, <laughs> it's fine. YouTube, YouTube algorithm is. is is gonna be fine. But like, put a yeah, put up the put up that. Actually, I'm gonna send you a picture, Mario, and I want you to put it up instead. Okay. All right, oh. all right. <laughs> okay, so that's gonna happen, guys. Um, thank you so much for listening this week. Before we go, we're gonna let everyone plug what the flip they've been doing. Um, we're going to start off with Mario. Where can people find you, Mario? You can find me at YouTube, Twitch, and on Twitter at that Mario Rivera. If you search that name, you will find me. Uh, if you also find my T public, you can also buy my T-shirts. Thank you. Awesome. That's great. Quick and sweet. Fantastic. We're going to go straight to Frank. What have you been doing, and where can people find you? I uh, I saved a man. What progress? What? Where yeah, can people yeah. find you on the internet? Yeah, dude? Last week he sh- he shot a man. He killed I a shot man. a man last week. Man. This week, oh, yeah, this week man, I yeah. this week I saved a man. Um, you can find me at Point in Progress here. Uh, I started doing some Twitch streams. Uh, I'm still getting used to it because uh, it, the last stream kind of broke. But I am trying. It, I've just been really sleepy, and I don't. My friends are like, "Hey, OBS is cool," and I'm like, "OBS looks." absolutely hard to work with but i'll figure it out at some point uh you can also find me at twitter at venom unfit snake where i've been posting clips uh i make I'm, I'm making meme videos on rainbow six so if you like that 
Yeah. I made a Lord Tachanka video that I'm very proud of. God, I'm never going to listen to that song again, by the way. If you oh, guys want to check it out. No, okay. I'm cutting you off before you start. Um, and Sly, where can people find you? You can find me pretty much anywhere on the internet at SlyClonemc. I start term on Monday, so like when this comes out. So like you might see school stuff you might see nothing who knows who knows and before anyone points it out on the show yes i noticed just now that's like one's name is missing mc so we will fix that for the next show i mean it's right for twitch yeah there you go there you but go. nothing else perfect <laughs> perfect. <laughs> perfect and Y'all can find me um, on Twitch, Twitter, at Zoranix. Um, you can see how it's spelled below. I'm not going to say that out loud because there's huge controversy on how to specifically say the beginning. What? Z-U-R-A-N-I-I-X. <laughs> you know what, Mario? You Gross. win some points there. Um, Zebra. And, Gross. Um, Zebra. Sad face. Next yeah, week, we are going to be live um, streaming the last podcast for the next nine months on the Attack on Titan season, uh, final season over at the Penultimate Conquest because the first par part of two part season is en um, ended last week. Um, you can also find me over at Speaking of Stadia, where I talked about Stadia and a bunch of games that I have been trying out when it comes to Stadia and the service, which is pretty exciting. And this week we actually talked about things that were not sports related, which was a thumbs up for me. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. So once again, you thank you. Hold on, hold on. What's up? I didn't plug anything. Harv! Oh my god! <laughs> I thought I got oh. Harv first! We don't need to worry about Harv. Thank you all for... <laughs> Also, fuck you, Harv, and let's go. Damn. You know what? That's what he gets. That's what he gets for all the BS that I get. What like my bank account's mad at me. My fucking like bank's like you've been spending too much money on games, and I'm like blame this guy. So where can blame people find you, off. Harv? People can find you inside Fee's wallet, <laughs> <laughs> where every time she opens it, you have Harv going. You you, you, just, you gonna I buy just, that game? I just, I just Jesus, have a picture Frank, of the game and doing this. <laughs> That's uh that's Van Sama. <laughs> no, you can find me at Beer in the Hair everywhere except YouTube is Beer in the Hair Gaming. I just put up a podcast with uh Norza, who is a content creator over in Australia, who is an awesome, awesome person. He makes tips and trick videos for like RPGs, like Fallout, uh Divinity. Uh he's doing a huge thing for Outriders. He is a really, really cool guy. He is one of it's probably one of the best episodes I've done so far of that Thanks. podcast. For, for all the content that he makes, he's kind of doing a little bit more twist up, but he's a YouTube uh, YouTube person. But seriously, go check him out and go check out that podcast over on YouTube.com slash Beard and the Hair Gaming. That's also, it. That's all, all I got. podcast services. And all podcast services, yes. It's, it's so, everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. Well, thank you once again, everyone who listened to us this evening and this afternoon or whenever you're actually listening to this podcast and i hope you have a great rest of your day and progress has been made bye